Good evening, everybody. Uh, another beautiful Sunday night, and welcome to episode 21 of Beyond the Court. I'm Sudsy, John Ellis, Ellie Style, Scotty Mack in the background. Doesn't happen without Scotty Mack. So, you know, thank you so much for joining us here on Sunday night, uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had an awesome Thanksgiving. And uh, tonight we have a very special guest. You know, you may not know who he is. But I can tell you this, that he's vital to the sport and he and the two guests we are going to have with us are vital to our survival and our freedom and our safety. So, uh, you know, with that, Ellie, we're going to have Stephen Harper tonight of the MRF and now the Max, which he will explain and get into that. So everybody watching, you know, this is important. This is a really good episode. You know, it's not just the normal, you know, ex-players or, 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 or current players. You know, these are guys that, and, and ladies that protect us when we sleep. Ellie, Stephen Harper here tonight with us. Yeah, you know, this can be an interesting call. Like last week with Todd Boss, you know, this is another uh, kind of different type of call for us where we're not, uh, like you said, having the, the past player or the current pros uh, talking about how they're doing on the court, maybe what they're doing off the court with the business. You know, Stephen Harper is all about uh, leaving a legacy right now in the sport of racquetball. Uh, through his military service. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a Navy man. And, um, you know, he's, he's one of the co-founders of MRF. And I was, uh, I was kind of there sideways, you know, next connected to it a little bit with Ectalon Racquetball at the time. Uh, you know, this is uh, God, 12 to 15 years ago, I think, right in there. But we'll find out for sure here from Steven. And, and um, I know him and Hank Marcus had a lot of connection in, in developing this and Peggy and Talese and, and, uh, and Jack. And, um, uh, <laughs> excuse me, Jack Hughes and Terry Rogers. So uh, there's people that we know that have been involved in the sport in different capacities for quite a while that assisted Stephen, but this is really driven by Stephen uh, MRF. And then, as you mentioned, the military adaptive court sports, which is a new name for MRF. Um, and we're going to, we're going to ask questions that uh, we want to know the answers to, you know, there's, it's not like I've been following this really closely over that last uh, 10 to 15 years. You know, it's, it's stuff that's uh, been there. I know I've known about it a bit, but uh not sure about you. This kind of started when you were out of the sport for a second, Sud. So, you know, you heard about it as you get back into the sport and you see things going on. You hear about the, the outdoor racquetball court on, on, the, uh, on the ship in San Diego. Um, and that's cool. And uh, we're going to hear a little bit about that, but it's so much more. So I look forward to bringing Steven in. He's a dynamic individual and uh, it'll be a good conversation. Yeah, it's definitely necessary. You know, there's, there's a lot of associations and organizations in our sport that, you know, get credit, right? And they're in the forefront. And the MRF, the Military Racquetball Federation, or the MAX, which Stephen will, you know, let us know what exactly that is, you know, doesn't get enough attention. It doesn't get enough, you know, enough love, quite frankly. But we'll get into that. But before we bring Stephen in, uh, we call this the monologue. I call it the Ellie monologue. Um, and Scotty Mack also informed me that I'm going to switch to headphones after this. So, you know, Military, the armed forces, whatever country you're from, you know, you can volunteer, right? And go serve in your military to protect and serve your country and the citizens. Did you? Did I? Did Ellie? Did Scotty Mack? I didn't. You know, some countries it's mandatory. Um, whether you support it or not, it takes a special human being, a special person to be part of it, you know, and put their life on the line and potentially you know, be out there to risk your life and risk everything you have for people that you don't even know. So, you know, that's the military. Truly, I don't believe we can ever say thank you enough or show our gratitude in full to all of the military all over the world that serves. You know, this is obviously, Stephen's a U.S. Navy. Uh, sorry, he, he's, he's in the U.S. Navy. Uh, we're going to have a guest that's a U.S. Marine. But how do you say thank you for somebody that you know, eventually could go into it into a war zone, somewhere that's unimaginable to me. We play professional racquetball, Ellie. That's easy. You know, people talk about that all the time. What is that? You know, that's hitting a ball. We're not getting bullets fired at us or, or grenades. You know, not many people know this, Ellie, and you don't know this. But my cousin, my first cousin, Brian, uh, he's a captain in the U.S. Army, and he lost a limb. You know, he lost a limb below the knee. And he talks about it and dismisses it as if the same as you and I getting hit with a racquetball, like whatever, 
you know, he's young, smart, healthy, captain in the U.S. Army, and he lost his leg below his knee. But life goes on, and he has been on the racquetball court. You know, tonight we're going to speak with Stephen Harper, co-founder of the Military Racquetball Federa uh, Federation, and we're also going to get to speak to some wounded warriors, which uh, to me is just quite the honor. So before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to throw on some headphones for Scotty Mack, and we'll be right back with Stephen Harper. really don't want to know you know mr harper i know i call you steve and i call you harper but we're live now and i i just think it's appropriate to call you sir and wow. i do i do know that you know the nerves are flying a little bit and that's cool because nerves are good because that means you care about it and and we just want to say cheers to you on beyond the court from ellie and i and of course scotty mack in the background thank you for being here with us and uh you know first and foremost thank you for your service so, Stephen, the last time I saw you, we were in the airport in Vegas, yep. and, and we were on our way home from, from the outdoor event that was uh, obviously a huge success. You know, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your background, um, you know, which branch of the military you serve in, and uh, let's go from there. Oh, dude. It's, well, first of all, appreciate you guys, <laughs> Ellis, Sudsy. For having me on tonight and i got some other special guests hopefully will be coming on in a little bit hey sooner or later i'm going to be sipping that way with you wherever you are Sunday. i don't know if you're in south e america ecuador it, I'm wherever in ecuador. that is uh, this is ecuador hey, there you go there you go so you know we hooked up in vegas on our way out, on our way back from three wall ball having a great time out there but um served in the navy for the last uh geez 20 plus years Retired as Lieutenant Commander, uh, which is equivalent to a major in all the other services, United States Navy. Did some crazy things while I was serving on uh, submarines, aircraft carriers. But when I was out in San Diego, that's when I guess, you know, things changed. Um, I saw a Marine when I was at San Diego, the hospital, Balboa Hospital. While I was working on my backhand and offer you North Carolina folks who say I don't have a backhand. Uh, we'll talk about that later when the courts open up again. <laughs> but anyway, so I was at the gym uh, finishing up a workout. I saw this Marine who, who lost his leg and the voice hit me, a calling hit me, said, hey, go teach that guy how to play racquetball. I'm like, what, you know, it's Sunday, but what the hell does that mean? You know, and spawn MRF, Military Racquetball Federation. Um, I caught up with that Marine who was walking upstairs that day. And we've been going strong ever since. So uh, MRF started from a vision, from a calling, from a ministry, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, John, you and I, man, we've been going strong for the last, Jesus, 15 plus years. And uh, suddenly we're still going strong now. You know, again, I, I just I just don't feel right calling you Stephen, even though that's, I know that's what. Dude, that's listen, listen, my, hey, they don't call me Stephen. They call me all kind of crazy names. So. Steven is fine for tonight and forevermore. <laughs> Me and you, we go back, so don't worry about it. All right, so don't worry about the back end. I'll help you take care of that, and everybody <laughs> in North Carolina will have nothing to say about your back end soon. Whoa, whoa, easy. <laughs> and, and no, 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 it's going to be the best in North Carolina. What do you mean? <laughs> so so how did you, you know, so you saw the Marine, yep. and something clicked and said, I'm going to go teach him, right, yeah. how to play racquetball. You know, why? Like, why racquetball? What, what, made, what made you say, I'm going to teach him how to play racquetball? So in the military, um, a lot of our service members, they have muscle memory. You know, we call it the warfighter spirit. When they go through training, things just click automatically. And that's the survival. You know, 
I told I tell tell a lot of people that you know the way you survive is off instinct, and your instinct comes from training. But when they get out of the military, whether it's because of a service-connected injury or because their contract is up or because their time is up, um, when they get out, you know they they lose that. So racquetball is all about muscle memory. John, you and I we talked about that. Mm-hmm. And I, it was just, I don't know, so it was just a thing. It said, hey, if they can just have muscle memory, what they learned in the military, all of that transposed into racquetball, you know? Um, forehand, backhand, you know, it's the same thing as them going into a room, you know, of unknown territories looking for TJs. We call them targets, you know, or tangos. And that muscle memory of them being on a combat field or operating machinery on an aircraft carrier or in the Coast Guard or whatever they do, they're trained. So we just, I just correlated that saying, you know, um, that warfighter spirit that they had in the military, they still have that when they get on the racquetball court. Because to be honest with you, you know, I'll be honest with the whole freaking whoever we're talking to, to our audience, not your audience, but our audience. Um, True story is my therapy is racquetball, period. I go to the VA here in North Carolina, in Durham, North Carolina, and I tell my recreational, I mean, my therapist all the time is, look, don't give me the medication because I don't want it. Because to me, it doesn't help. When you hit a ball up against a wall, and then when you put a target to it, you know, how low can you hit 18 inches, six inches, you know, or not skip the ball, whatever. But if I keep trying to practice that, over and over again, guess what? That's therapy. And it's been proven medically and it's been proven, you know, through a clinical research how sports helps our service members with their rehabilitation. So that was a whole correlation on how we stay successful then and still now. Um, we got a lot of veterans out there who need help. Tell, her, tell, tell us a little bit about your racquetball background before. I know Ellie's got tons of questions too, but you know, Stephen, tell everybody that's watching a little bit about your racquetball background, how you got into racquetball, and then and then how it and then how it stayed with you throughout your military career. Ellie, Ellie, the reason why I laugh is because Ellie knows what I'm talking about. You know, Ellie and I, we hooked up in San Diego. I think we met at at, a, at nationals or whatever. Hmm. We both were on the team uh, with Ectalon when they were around, and I got a crazy notion. I told John, I told him late then and day, I said, "Look, dude, we're going somewhere." And he, I looked him right in the face and said, you know, I think, Ellie, that was back in, I don't know, 2009, 2008, whenever. Right, somewhere around And that. my racquetball um, spawned from Nationals because at the time, Scott Winters was there, and I told him, flat out Suggs, and I, I don't know where you were. I, you know, we try to get everybody and anybody, but MRS spawned because I said, I want to grow racquetball. I want the world to see what racquetball is. I mean, you know. The tennis channel, we love to have it on the tennis channel, but I said, screw that. I'm not waiting. I'm going to do it. So back in, what was it? I think 2009, we actually put that racquetball court on the aircraft carrier out in San Diego. And unfortunately, it's the same one that caught a fire, the USS Barnum Bouchard. Wow. Um, so in San Diego, when we set that up, the whole racquetball world took notice of who we are. And that's when... MRF, Military Racquetball Federation, started was because we had the guts, and Ellie, you were there, Scott Winters and a couple others, they took a chance on us. Echelon took a chance on this crazy idea that I had, and when it came true, then they knew we were for real. So in my, in my, in my world, racquetball is my life. Yeah, I tell any and everybody, and the, way, the reason why I say that is because, you know, I see the passion. I see how it helps other service members. And when they get a chance to just be on the court, whether it be indoor or outdoor, um, they just come alive. I, I teach a lot of folks, Ella, like you do. And it's, you, you know, when the light bulb clicks with them, you know, and I even teach folks from a wheelchair, Ella, it's such that we'll get into that if we got time. But I think that's where it all came from, from San Diego, Ben, on that rack, on that aircraft carrier. And we've done some crazy things since. Um, Virginia Beach, 2015, we put a racquetball court on the beach. Everybody says you can't build a house in the sand. Well, don't tell me <laughs> it's Sunday. Don't tell me what we can't do. Tell me why we can't do it. And I'll show you when we're going to do it. So um, that's how we got started. 
you know, besides Scott Winters and, and Ectalon, who were some of the other individuals that were right up front with you from the very beginning of MRF? Oh, man. Um, so listen, I'm going to be honest and humble. <laughs> a lot of the folks in North Carolina right here uh, say that's a different, I got a different personality, but I do. I like to be humble. Um, I look up to you guys, you know, Sutsy, I know your story, you know, you got the big heavy hitters. And I know, you know, uh, recently a lot of the, 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 um, the leadership has changed, but when I was coming up, you know, we had you, John, man, I, you know, you're crazy. So you jumping on a freaking wall just to go get a ball, Ellie, that's just crazy, <laughs> Sutsy, you know, you and Cliff and, you know, a lot of the cats back in the day, uh, Rhonda, Rocky, Alvaro, Chris, uh, Crowder, the big hitters were my influence. So when I said out in California, something that I wanted to do at the time, I went to all the, all the racket industries, you know, Wilson, not to, not to blast anybody. I'm just being honest, horse mouth here. Um, I went to all, all the companies and said, Hey guys, we want to do something. Who's going to get behind us. And, you know, it, you know, you, you know how we are, the racquetball family, we, we, we do things slow and, you got to show us to believe in this, that, and the other. I said, okay, fine. Screw you guys. I'm going to show you. And then we had that conversation. And that's just kind of where it started. You know, another question I have here, uh, Stephen, is, is you know, how has the Military Racquetball Federation impacted the veterans that you've come into contact with? You know, and I'll, let me say something too up front is, Every single time I see you in a racquetball publication or social media, you're teaching, you're, in, you're providing instruction, you're getting caught in action on a photo that doesn't look set up, that looks genuine every yeah. time, and you're, and you're providing instruction. So I'm motivated by, your, by you and, and, and those early conversations. I mean, I was, you know, I kind of was telling you early on, like, hey, I could be your tournament director. And then as you got bigger and bigger and, and this got really going and, you know, I was almost like, you know, intimidated about the idea of wanting that position as being one of the early tournament directors. And I was kind of happy that Peg Ean really jumped in and took it on, but you know, you're to be admired for all the instruction that you're provided to, uh, to wounded, wounded uh, veterans and, and uh, the wounded warriors project in particular. So, you know, how's, how's MRF impacted those two groups? And so let me set the record straight. One, you know, Ellie, you know, do you, we and I, I, you know, you guys do incredible things on the court, period. I mean, the stuff that you guys do, all these followers who watch you guys are in awe. Um, I know I could never do, I mean, I'm getting close. I'm, I'm not diving on the court. I, you know, dude, I, I like my, I like my charm the way it is. But what I see is, you know, I know what my calling is, you know, and for MRF, Military Racquetball Federation, I know what these service members are dealing with. Cause I was one of them. Um, you know, the statistics say that a lot of our veterans deal with, a, you know, I, you know, this is why I get emotional sometimes. So, you know, I'm being honest and truthful. You know, we got too many of our veterans who contemplate suicide thoughts, actually, you know, 22 a day. You know, with this whole COVID thing, I know that number has increased because a lot of people just don't have an outlet. Um, 22 a day veterans commit suicide. That's crazy, you know? And the reason why, that's that's what we know. We don't know about the unknown. At least 62,000, and that number is probably even higher now, suffered from a serious combat injury, lost a limb, lost a leg loss of arm or something to that effect and they have been impaired for the rest of their life serving their country at least 800,000 deal with other issues serving this country and the VA understands that but I'll just tell you guys straight up the VA can't treat the veterans one on one and that's what we do you know we me personally, I'm up close and personal with them because I know their stories. I'll give you a quick story if I can. So I say, no, um, I please do. Down, I was down in, where were we? San Antonio, Fort Hood, Fort Hood. So to all the cats in Colleen, <laughs> we definitely want to get back down. But I remember we were in Colleen doing a, doing a clinic and we were taking pictures and the flash went off of my camera. 
you know, we had like 18 to 20 veterans there, never met them, you know, we're building this trust thing through the clinic. And one of the female veterans literally started breaking down and crying. I'm like, what the hell just happened? You know, I, you know, we make sure we keep them in a safe environment. Come to find out she was crying because she thought that flash put her back on the combat field. What the hell? Yeah. The reason why I use those, and if you guys ever see the yellow ball that I use, but when I teach at a beginner's level, I use a, a special foam ball that we have with a manufacturer. So if you hit, Ellie, you hit the ball 130 miles an hour, you don't even think about it, you know? But when you're in a court that's closed up with eight to 12 other veterans um, and you hear that sound, guess what? It sounds like a gunshot. And it's like, whoa, man. So instead of us helping them, we're actually hurting them. And I, and I figured that out quickly. And that's why we had to adapt to our audience. We had to adapt to the community. So I don't use these foam balls. But just those two examples of just hitting the ball, forehand or backhand, sounds like a gunshot to these service members. And that is, a, they call it a trigger. And with that trigger, it sets them way back. With a flash, I mean, you know, a flash of a camera sets them way back. So we're learning how to treat their injuries through racquetball, but we have to be in their world just for a moment to understand, you know, what they're dealing with so we can help them. And when we do that, I've had one other down in Fort Benning. I, I never forget this story, you know, like eight years ago, I was at Fort Benning, you know, home of Airborne or whatever they call it. And this, this would always stay with me. We would, I was teaching a class of about 80 some soldiers at the time. You know, me and a couple other folks there helping out this, that, and the other. Ellie, and at the end of that clinic, I had a soldier, a female soldier, I'll never forget. She came up to me. She said, you know, I had a good day. And I was like, I had a good class. I'm like, okay, great. We're glad. No, she said, no, I had a great class. I'm like, okay. Her therapist said what she was saying was, and then she told me, she said, today, I, I don't feel like I want to kill myself. Mm. Just because she was hitting a ball. That's why we do what we do. I mean, it's those kind of story that you just don't know where these service members are. And that's at a unit. But when they get out of the military and they go back into the local community, that's why I'm, you know, thank you guys for getting us on. Hopefully you're, you'll hear from our other two, but we're all over the country. And it, we got so many stories like that, man, guys who are dealing with substance abuse, anger management, divorce rate is at a crazy level. And when they get on the court, all of that just goes away. It's just hitting a freaking ball. And it's like, for us, it doesn't mean anything, but for them, it changes their life. So that's why, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, LEDs, when you guys saying this, that, and the other, I, I don't see it like that. It's just, I get a chance to be in front of a group and uh, I take a racket and a ball and change people's lives. And it's like, man, it's making a difference. So that's why we do it, you know, um, been doing it and we, impacted over 7,600 some veterans since we started MRF back in 2009. Wow. You know, rarely am I speechless. <laughs> and, and, and anybody that knows me and, and watch this show and yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, my eyes are welling up and, and yeah. you know, it, it is, it's emotional. And, yeah. um, you know, at, at the end of this, I hope that everybody that watches, you know, wants to be part of the MRF or, or the MAX, which we'll get into in a minute here. Um, you know, but but really, I, I, I'm Ellie, I'm speaking. This is this is yeah, a tough one. I, for me. I tell you, you know, listen, I'm so here's, here's the thing, Ellie, you know, and I'm sorry. And I, I, you guys, you guys cut me up because I can go on. I look, I know we only got a little bit of time, but keep going. My thing is, you know. We got 1.5 million veterans out in the out in the community nationwide. MRF or Max, thanks, Suzy, I appreciate that. But Max is a small entity. But yeah, I'm, let's be real. In the racquetball community, everybody wants to hold, and I can't say what I want to. This is a family show, but I no, everybody can, wants can, to hold that stuff in. It's like you could say it. look what I got, and you know, I you know, no man, dude, look. I am who I am. I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. But you get on the court, we're going to get a good game in. 
you know, and, and, I, and I try to bring that, but it's bigger than that. My whole point is we in the community, in, in the racquetball world, we got to give back. You know, we got to teach the kids. We got to teach in, in my community, you know, the, uh, the, the, the veterans and the wounded warriors, wherever you are. It's like give back something without a dime in, in the expectation. I do this stuff for free. I do this full time with no income expected. Let, let, let yeah. me ask, let me ask you that. How do you, you know, wounded warriors, Yeah. right? We, we, we see a lot about it. How do you identify and then how do you go and capture any wounded warrior to come be part of, you know, to play racquetball, like to try that? Can I give you another story? I'm going to tell course. you my motivation. I mean, I took my, this is the one that really shakes me up. I mean, I get emotional right now even talking about it. My, my daughter at the time was eight years old. No, eight, nine years old, whatever. Man, I'm old. I, I forget, you know, th things kind of slip. So you keep, keep how, living. How, how old are you? How old are you, by the way? Sir? Come on, man, dude. 51. Come on. <laughs> you, what do you mean? You, you, you look and move around like you're about 28. So, you know, that doesn't. <laughs> no man hey listen listen i thank god everything for my strength you know and i i say that with with this crap this pandemic going on with this COVID 19 don't ever take anything for 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 granted your health i mean you know one little whatever and you're down for two weeks maybe or longer so i pray for those folks who are dealing and got family members suffering from COVID. but the story that shakes me up I mean, it, it wakes me up out of my sleep sometime is when I took my daughter to Omaha, Nebraska, and I, you, you can't make this stuff up. And she said, Dad, look at that guy. I said, I, her name is Steph. I said, Steph, but you can't point. But it just freaked her out. This guy was a Marine. Now, you and I, we have bad days. His good day was he lost both his legs. He lost one arm. He was shot in the eye, blind in one eye. He was in a motorized wheelchair, only that one arm that he could move around. He was smiling, you know, it's like, okay. He was at this clinic that we were doing. It was the uh, wheelchair games that the VA hosts every year around the country. 650 veterans in a wheelchair come to participate in like 12 different sporting events. And we got invited to teach racquetball. And my daughter looked at him and I said, yeah, you know, that's, that's what war does to some people, you know, um, both legs, one arm, and can barely see out of one eye. And he came up, his, his family came up, um, sorry. His family came up to us during the tournament because we had a booth set up, you know, a hitting booth. We couldn't set up a court or anything like that. So we had a batting cage that the people can just hit the ball at a, at a square in a batting cage. And his name was Doug. And Doug came up in his motorized wheelchair and literally took his hand, you know, drove his chair up. I turned to him to a certain way. I kid you not, I took a racket and I actually duct taped the racket to his hand and I told him to swing. He was hitting the cage square target area that we set up. He hit that same square eight out of 10 times. His family started crying. I'm, I, I started to walk away because I'm like, man, and his mother came up to me. It's like, you know, out of all the sports that he's tried, I've never seen him smile like this. I'm like, you got to, I mean, I, I lost it. I <laughs> like I'm losing it now. Um, it's all right. Hey, hey, I, you so, may not yeah. see it, but guess what? Yeah. Yeah. It's, hap it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, you know, and it's like that impact me from then on in. That told me that that day said, that's why you do what you do. And I'm going to get real ugly for a minute. I don't give a flying flip who he, who's there. This stuff is real. I mean, it's, you can't make that up. And it's like, and my I, thing is, as the executive director, 
I'm not looking for a title, Ella, you know me. I, I don't care about titles. I don't care about what I can hang on my wall as far as a plaque and this, that, and other. If I can help guys like Doug, that my daughter sees it and understands why daddy has to get on the plane again to go to whatever state, city to go teach, damn it, that's what I'm supposed to do. And it's my calling. So that's why I take it very serious. Um, so I don't know if I answered that question. You all right, Ellie? You okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm letting I'm letting Sudsy know that I I want a question. I want to ask. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I I mean, at this point, I think we should just tell the entire crowd. You know, is when Ellie or I go like this, it just means that we want to grab the next question. So gotcha. I mean, both of us right now could be doing this because I I don't know what to say. I'm i you got me. You know what, <laughs> Stephen? My wife's gonna want you to come hang out because you got me speechless. I I can't speak right now. I don't know what to say. You know, Steven, the I, hey, hey, hold on one second, Ellie. Give yeah. me the Ecuador. We'll figure that out. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll discuss that. There you go. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I got to follow up on that because, uh, you know, as I was uh, saying earlier, you know, every photo, every moment I see of you, your, your teaching is genuine. And, you know, there's a lot of people who have that sense of wanting to give back, but don't know what to get yeah. involved in. Maybe they can't have a junior program at their club. Yeah. They're in an LA fitness area, whatever the case is that's keeping them from, you know, being able to try to push this game into other people's lives, uh, whether they're civilians or, or, you know, wounded warriors coming back from combat, you know, if there are people who want to get involved as an instructor as, and learn, and we're going to bring the guys in after this question, but you know, it, how do they go about doing that, Stephen? How, how does one go about trying to, to get involved and, and be, and provide instruction and to do it the right way? So I know we're not supposed to do this, but damn it, I'm I'm sorry. Do it. Sorry, do sorry, it. sorry. sorry. <laughs> I get I get it. Yeah, do I get it. it. Hey, if you're not supposed to do it, you can do it on Beyond the Court. There go. you go. There you go. So I don't know, Elliot, if I can how we do this, but I definitely want to give three points of contact out for me. Do my it. My phone number, my email address, and my other email address and our website. Okay. So look. And my thing is, and, and no offense to any of them, to AMPRO or whoever the certifying agency is now through USRA, I'm not looking for the titles. I'm looking for folks who can help us out in their local community. Um, and the reason why I say that is because a lot of times when we go to Cincinnati or we go to St. Louis, I got to go to St. Louis in a week from now. I'm looking for, guy, for folks, not guys, but guys and girls there. I'm looking for foot soldiers. So when I could show up, we do the clinic, and when I leave, I need somebody who I can trust to keep the candle lit, to keep the torch burning in their local area. And I will give them everything we, they need, whether it's a membership at a YMCA LA Fitness, whether it's rackets, we got everything right here. I just need to know who I can trust and say, okay, I'm going to give you everything you need to be able to teach a veteran or a wounded warrior, can you run the torch for us? And if you're genuine about it, we got a lot of cover. To, we got a lot of ground to cover. So, Ellie, I don't know how we do that, but I definitely want to make sure that folks can reach out and just be patient with me. Uh, we, we're a small group. I will get back in touch with you one of three ways. I like a phone call, but it's definitely you know. Um, what's what's your out. what's your email address? Tell your email address because Scotty Mac is going to share it right now while we're while we're having this conversation. So. It is pretty long, but go ahead, you go. go for it. It is sharper. So it's S Harper, which is Stephen Harper, S Harper, H A R P E R, at military adaptive court sports dot O R G. S right. Harper, military adaptive court sports dot org yeah and and for everybody watching share that contact steven how you can help um yeah. you know because this is so important you know going into every show ellie and i you know and scotty mack we talk about it and we're like where's this gonna go what are we gonna discuss yeah. you know a lot of times it's easy right like you know if you have a jason menino or a cliff swain or you know you know what you're gonna talk about yeah and and, and then of course Ellie and I and Scotty Mack, we, you know, we had a good idea what we were going to go at, but man, I got to tell you, this one's probably, you know, hit 
deep down in here, wow. you know, in the first yeah. 30 minutes, more than the other 20 episodes, as this is the 21st episode. So, you okay. know, Stephen, we're, we're going to get back to the max, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. I mean, yeah. 30, 30 seconds, don't move. And then Scotty Max going to bring in a couple of wounded warriors that, you know, you invited to come in and we're going to talk to them and we're going to get their kind of, you know, their view and vision on, you know, how they started playing racquetball because, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, we're all part of the racquetball family. And go. then, uh, and then we're going to go back to you. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't move. And uh, we'll see you in about 15 seconds. Say, sounds good. All right, here we are. We're back with, uh, you know, two wounded warriors. And, and I don't know what to say. I mean, at this point, I'm just speechless. You know, we have Ken Shockley. We have Ernest. I know Ken is in Nevada. Ernest, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. Where, where are you at, Ernest? Uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Okay, great. So you, you, you're in Nevada. And, uh, you know, Ken, I'm going to start with you. First off, to both of you, thank you so much for your service. I'm sure you hear that a lot. But I got to tell you, you know, it means sometimes words just aren't enough. And, uh, you know, thank you both. So, you. you know, thank Ken, you. I'm going to start with you. How did you get involved in racquetball? And, you know, you know, what was the impact it had on you from being, a, you know, a wounded warrior? I see the Marine, you know, the Marine. Am I saying uniform? Is that correct or incorrect? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So you're Okay. You know, how did you get into racquetball? Why? And, and what has it done for you? Well, I started when I was actually in the Marine Corps. We were playing uh, after PT. We'd go out and go run three, five, ten miles. Afterwards, we'd go and uh, hit the courts and uh, start a little tournament, play the officers, play the enlisted guys. And so that's kind of how I got started. But it wasn't until after I got injured 20 some years later that I actually got involved into this. And I got involved through my local VA. I saw it at uh, my local VA that said there's racquetball as, as therapy. And I thought, well, um, there's no better way than to go ahead and get involved. And let me see if I can, my old body can do what I remembered what I used to do 20 some years ago. Ernest? Yes. Same, same question for you. Um, well, I tried in Iraq, uh, military as well in the Marine Corps. Um, but also um, after, after I got out, it was on the uh, recreational therapy through the VA. And so me and Ken play. And so, so, so when you're starting your service and you're playing some racquetball before, before you're wounded, uh, you know, talk a little bit about that. You know, uh, where were you, where were you at? Where were you located? And, and uh, what were the court situations like? Because I know yeah. the, a lot of people are interested in that. They don't hear enough about the racquetball courts on military bases, whether it's here in the United States or even courts internationally. Yeah, that's a uh, great question. It, it was in the gym. In the gyms, they had like uh, two or three, like two courts um, at Camp Pendleton. Um, okay. I know they have uh, three courts here at Nellis Air Force Base. And we sometimes go there uh, before the pandemic. Ken? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I was at El Toro in California before they closed the base there. They were very crude, just cement walls around us with some, some mesh up at top to let some airflow in. Um, but it was mostly smash ball. We would just go in and we didn't really know the rules. We just kind of went in there and hit the ball as hard as we could and, and tried not to hit each other is, is basically what it was when, when we played. Interesting. Um, so, you know, God, where, where to go with this? Sudsy? I'm kind of with you. So, here yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of, you know, I've got questions, you know, this kind of, this question is, uh, 
is for all three of you in, in particular, because, uh, you know, kind of back to that idea of, of, uh, you know, interest in providing instruction. Um, well, first, before I go there, you know, maybe, maybe you could both tell us a little bit about your injuries, uh, you know, your wounds so that we get a good idea of what, what, uh, what the differences are from being, uh, you know, healthy, uh, soldiers with, with good health, uh, to where you're at now. Sure. Um, for me, uh, it started 22 years ago. I was, uh, training to go to Iraq. We were out of 29 Palms in the desert. It was a, a dark moonless night and I was uh, heading back to camp to go to sleep for the night. Ended up slipping and falling into a fighting hole. Ended up hitting the back of my head and hurt every vertebrae down my back. Pop, 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 pop. Um, had to have my buddy help me up. Uh, took me to the doctor out there in the field. Um, gave me two Motrin, told me to go to bed. It's no big deal. But I knew my body and I knew something wasn't right. So I went and talked to the colonel. He threw me in the back of a Humvee. We go bouncing 22 miles across the desert. Um, got to the main side hospital where they wheeled me in, put me on a straight board and a neck brace, took some x-rays and found out that I broke my neck. Um, so I was uh, walking in, around with a broken neck for over four hours. Um, was eventually airlifted from there to Balboa Hospital and ended up having surgery a month later on the Marine Corps birthday and uh, was told that I would never walk again after the surgery. So for me, it, was, uh, it wasn't very good uh, results, but it's like I said, it's been 22 years. I'm still on my feet. I'm still amble. So I'm still doing pretty good. So I, considering what they said then, I think I'm doing well. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, I'm glad to hear that you're on your feet, you know, and that that wasn't the scenario that played out that, uh, um, you know, that's really that's really great to hear. Ernest, quick, quick. story. Um, I, I got hurt overseas. Um, I don't really want to go into it. Um, OK. I uh, also hurt my back where uh, L4, L5. Uh, became extrusion discs, which is basically a complete blown disc, but hold by the membranes around the disc. Uh, had herniation, so I had back surgery in uh, 011, uh, November. Um, uh, I wasn't able to severe sciatica down my right leg. Um, I mean, we also have hidden scars, which, you know, PTSD and anxiety and... Um, those don't show as much. I mean, sure, but it's mainly the back. And so, um, doing racquetball just helped me being around other veterans and get out of the house more that, you know, and, and you mentioned in that the hidden scars, uh, you know, that's kind of where it leads me into my next question, you know, and when, when, when you have players providing instruction and, and you're going through these clinics with, with wounded warriors, you know, what are some of the key elements? Uh, Steven mentioned, uh, key elements of instruction for the unique situation that wounded warriors present um, on the racquetball court. And, and you know, uh, Stephen mentioned uh, using using a ball that's not making a loud noise early on in the process to not have any triggers. But are, are there other are there other elements of the instruction, um, you know, by able civilians that that are really key to, you know, engaging the wounded warrior into enjoying their their time on the court and really providing you know, even better rehabilitation than, than one would think. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and speak on that. Um, I think it, it depends on each individual, you know, because I have some depression and some PTSD from my experience as well. But uh, Terry Rogers has been our coach and Jack Hughes has also been our coach. So they have been very key into taking each one of us and figuring out what individual needs are for each of us. We have people that are in wheelchairs that they play differently than we do because they're not able to turn and get to the ball like we can. So they have been very great about figuring out what individual needs that we have or what that we need and giving us instructions on that. Um, I know for example, for me, there's a couple of players that are very loud and when they talk and it's really hard on my ears because it echoes inside the racquetball court. So they, they know not to pair me with some of those people because when they laugh or they cackle, it just triggers me off. So they, they know it's not to do it. Ernest, what, what, are the, what are some of the things, you know, about racquetball that you really enjoy 
And then what are some of the things that are maybe a little bit more difficult to deal with? Uh, I just enjoy it because it's with other veterans, just to be around other people that um, could relate to what we're going through. It's easier to deal with some of the issues. Um, I also enjoy it. It brings out the compare. I'm very competitive um, and I'm usually harder on myself knowing I could have done better, but you know, I have to do with what, what my body is able to allow me to do. And it's sometimes hard when you know your mind, you know, you used to be better and your body's just not there anymore. Sometimes. Um, I, I mean, there's no doubt you're better than, than certainly me, because I, I can't imagine, you know, what you two have been through and, and obviously many others, but um, you know, again, I can't say thank you enough for, for what your service. And I know words suck sometimes, right? Like words just, they're just not enough, you know, like people talk a lot and, and say a lot, but it's like, well, well now what, right? Like, you know, and, and, we'll talk to Steven after about what, what I can do, what Ellie can do, what we can do collectively to be a bigger part of, of MRF. And um, I, I just hope that one day myself and Ellie and, and Scotty Mack in the background, you know, we can hit a ball around with you, you know, whether it's uh, you know, in Vegas or wherever it may be, but man, this like is, this, this is, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do that, you know, and, and this is, this is a tough one, you know, this is a tough show for me right now. You know, listen to this. No, I, I think, I think Suds, you're right on. And, and guys, that, that would be, you know, such a treat for guys like us who, who want to hear these stories and, um, you know, who've played racquetball for the United States of America. You know, we've had USA on our back in that sense. And, you know, and we're doing our small part, uh, but nothing compared to joining the military and being ready to go to combat. And, and so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's small compared to that, but the concept and idea of being able to play with, with uh, wounded warriors, with veterans is, you know, something that I'm interested in getting involved in. And I know there will be others that, that see the show that will be interested as well. You know, from a personal standpoint for you two guys, you know, how much racquetball are, you know, how, how deep is racquetball for you right now? You know, you know, in the situation that you're in, is it, is it, are you in love with the sport to the point where you're watching? I mean, a lot of the, a lot of our viewers are the diehard viewer, you know, racquetball people here in the United States and around the world, you know, but are you guys watching racquetball online before this COVID? Are you taking in tournaments and uh, just how into it are you? Yeah. Um, I, I absolutely love racquetball. Unfortunately, I live in a place that doesn't have any racquetball courts. I have to drive to Las Vegas. For me, it's about an hour and a half just to get mm. to the close racquetball court. So my weekly, therapy with the MRF and doing that, that's really good therapy for me. And that keeps me motivating, keeps me dr my drive going. But yeah, I do. I watch, um, watch Rocky Carson on Facebook and watch, I go on YouTube and watch all the tournaments live, try to pick up some things. So even though when I'm not at the court, I can kind of pick my brain and figure out what I need to do. Um, and we've been, I know Ernest and I have gone to the three wall ball in Las Vegas over the last three years. Yeah. And, you know, how was it this year for you guys, you know, taking in, taking in the play there and, and seeing, uh, you know, the big story obviously was having Kane Wazel and Chuck there to, to get, to try his hand at outdoor racquetball. He did really well. So, so did you guys get to watch him play and just the experience you had this year at the, at that event? It was harder this year because of the COVID we weren't able to really spectate and it wasn't as, um, long it just um i think covid had a lot to do with it this year sure um than the years past where we were able to sit and watch more that's unfortunate too because it was such a unique event this year with having some new names and some new faces there sudsy himself you know taking part and playing with alex londa his doubles partner indoors uh you know that that's uh you know that's unfortunate and uh hopefully next year 2021 it's it's changed and it's uh, things are a little more back to normal and uh, you guys are able to be right there uh courtside you know front row taking in taking in those types of matches because they're you know they're really exciting for all of us right um you know i'm curious from from all of you and maybe this is, is a question for steven a little bit more at first but uh you know maybe you guys have some input too but what's involved in a clinic for wounded warriors let's say it's a a group of uh, a group of warriors that are you know six to ten players 
that are seeing a racquetball court for the first or second time and they're on the court, you know, how does walk us through how that, 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 that clinic begins. Steven, maybe that, maybe that's for you. So <clears throat> we size them up on based on their ability. Um, every time I travel, I never know what I'm going to get. You just don't know. So we train our instructors to be ready for the unexpected. You know, and if, 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 if a person, male, female, shows up in a wheelchair, you dare not to turn them away. We have to adapt to where they are. Right. I was teaching a class um, in Washington, D.C., and the guy came in, I kid you not, with some church shoes on. You know, I mean, we teach guys who or guys and girls who are homeless. And it's like, you know, you, you can't turn them away because you just defeated the whole purpose. So we have to adapt to where they are. So the first thing is let's find out what their capabilities are. Once we know what their limitations are, their mobility, then we can kind of give them a, a two hour intro again, teaching them about a backhand. Yeah, I'm <laughs> teaching them the basics of a backhand, a forehand, the drop and hit drill. We, what we don't want to do is talk so much instructions. We want them just to hit the ball. I don't care if they break a light hitting, hitting the ball up at the ceiling or something, but it's just for them, like Ernest said, just to get some of that emotion, just to get some of that anger out, you know? And when they hit that ball, all that stuff just release. Ken, you guys in Vegas, how did Terry introduce you guys to the, to the, um, to the sport? Yeah, it was basically just like you said, Stephen. Uh, she sides us up by, by our abilities. And then uh, she gave us, she'll start us all with some drills. So she'll throw some balls out, do five or six backhands in a row, do six or seven forehands, uh, do some ceiling ball drills. She'll, she'll do a lot of drills with us, footwork drills. And then she'll pair us up one-on-one uh, -on -one and watch us and then coach us as we need fit to, to move around the court better or to pick a, a, a better yeah. shot. Yeah. Let, sure. let, 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 let me let me ask you this, both of you, before we let you go, because, you know, you, you've been with us here and uh, we could definitely keep you for hours. But I want to know, Ernest, you know, what is it about racquetball? I know you said that, you know, be able to share that with somebody that's gone through it with you, you know, or, or knows what you're dealing with, because we certainly don't. We have no idea. You know, people call us great athletes and heroes. We're not shit. You guys. <laughs> are the heroes. You know, we do what we do because of people like you that voluntarily say, we're going to allow you to go do what you do. But, you know, for racquetball, like that's our passion, right? Like that's our love also. So what is it like, what do you love about the physical aspect of it? Like, is there something like Steven touched on it, like just blasting a ball or getting out there? Like, is there something specific about it? You know, in earnest, this is first for you. And then, and, and then Ken, of course, I want I want you to answer also, but is there something about racquetball, you know, Ernest, that I don't know, maybe you, you like a little bit more. Um, I don't know. It, it, was, it was starting to, because it was out there and I haven't tried it in a while to get competitive, um, to get my body moving again, because sometimes when I sit around my back, it's stiff to where, you know, I don't feel like one, take a bunch of pain pills or, you know, hot, trying to find a reason just to get comfortable um, and just get my body moving again. And racquetball was there for me. And it's it's just fun. Um, I mean, I get better than me and can basically challenge each other each week. <laughs> um, and we so, get uh, so who's been, ta who's been taking who's been taking the matches lately? The game. Uh, I go back and forth a lot, but Ernest has really been putting the challenge on me the last few weeks. The serve has gotten incredibly good to where it's almost impossible to return now. What type of serve? I like that. Oh, he's got he's got multiple in the bag, so he can go Z serve and go down the line. He's got some some nice little lofts that that'll go in there. He's he's got a whole full bag of tricks. All right, that's good to hear. I mean, that's uh you know that's that's a major part of the game. Obviously, the serve serve return. There and to uh, be able to execute both of those at a high level puts you in the dominant position in a rally. So I'm glad to hear that that's happening right there and you got a challenge in front of you. Yeah, but I'm usually my own worst enemy because sometimes I let my mind get 
get to me sometimes during the match. Ernest, yeah, I try not to, so. who, who's your fa- who's your favorite player? Do you have a favorite player? I had the opportunity to play with Rhonda during the um, three wall ball. And I like how she plays. I like how she jumps for a ball and ends up like just where it's non-returnable. She's an incredible athlete. You know, she's one of the greatest athletes that's uh, ever played racquetball. And uh, certainly on the female side, maybe the greatest that's ever played racquetball in terms of her her athletic ability. So great call there. Ken, what about you? Who's your favorite? Yeah, Who's your favorite? I, I got a good opportunity to play with Rhonda last year too, so she's one of my favorites as far as females go. Um, but Rocky, I would say, is probably my number one guy that I like to go to not only for watching him in person, but just his personality. I met him a few times, and he's he's given me more than ample time than than he should have when he was getting ready and prepping for a match. Yeah, he he's a good dude, and I I know that they you know MRF is important to him and. And he knows Steven also. Is there anything else that maybe, you know, the two of you want to tell all the people watching and the people that will watch, you know, what can they do to, to help you guys out, you know, and be part of MRF? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Supporting Steven and be number one. Um, without this, I don't know where I'd be because um, I've gained more mobility. My depression is down. My PTSD is more in check. So it's really done a lot for me physically. Um, I know there's only certain spots around the country that this is available right now. So spreading this out across the country to make it even bigger than it already is uh, would be a great thing. So supporting Stephen in any way that he probably needs help would, would be the best. Ernest? I couldn't say it better. I mean, to be able to go places and play is probably the biggest challenge. Um you know, and hopefully, you know, they get more tournaments where we can uh, get the word out um, and just play. Um, it it helps. It helps not being in locked up in the house a lot. And yeah, Ernest, you're a little you're a little emotional, just like we all are. Why is that? I don't know. Because he wants to get on the court and play with me, man. Ernest, we get it, you know? I'll get yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that, that Ernest, hope you don't mind me. And I know you got a, you got, you got another commitment, Ernest, so uh, I'm going to... Yeah, gonna, I got to get going. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want you to leave, Ernest. Can you hang out, please? Don't, don't, don't uh, go um, yet. I could stay about another 10 minutes. Uh, I, I I like that because I feel, I feel there's more to it. You know, like I feel there's more racquetball or more, you know, like, like, I don't know. I'm just happy you're here right now. I, I've, got, I've got a question for both of you guys. I mean, you know, uh, that was a good question. Sudzi asked about how, how could, how, you know, what could, what could other people do to help the situation? But what are, what are your dreams with racquetball? Like, what are your, what's the ultimate that could happen in terms of your racquetball life? Now that you're into the sport, you know, is it, is it playing, is it playing in, in, in events that are more noticed by the racquetball community? Is it maybe traveling internationally to play uh, other wounded warriors in racquetball or, or uh, veterans or even active uh, military um, yeah, in, other, veteran, in other countries? If you know, possible. I mean, it just, it depends on what, what could happen, but I mean, that wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad idea playing other veterans because we're all in it together. Um, just to get the word out. Right. Yeah, I agree. I want to do everything that you just said. I want to go international. <laughs> I want to play against the, the pros. And, and that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm at the point to where I want to test myself physically to see where I stack up against some of the, some of the pro players. Do I, am I a, a B class? Am I a C class? And where do I rank? So that I think I'm more transitioning into getting in there and, and not being the, um, classified as being the disabled guy out on the court right now um there's nothing wrong with that at all i still absolutely love that title and i cherish it deeply but i want to see what i can do against full able-bodied people that's kind of my goal yeah that's great too and i I truly hope that uh you know those opportunities present themselves here going forward and i know steven's uh been about that for a while and will continue to be about trying to make those opportunities uh a reality here in the future and um, you know, Stephen. You know, let's 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 go back a little bit to the outdoor event that was uh, held on the aircraft carrier in San Diego. You know, and, and maybe uh-huh. maybe walk some of the people through that just a little bit close, a little bit more. You know, 
how that came about and uh, who, who, you know, who was involved, who played on the court and who, you know, that, that was, that was a real honor for the players that got to play. So, you know, take us back. It's been a little while now, obviously, but maybe take us back and the people listening can hear about it a little bit. So back in, like I was, I was still on active duty at the time. So I had a lot more access when you're in uniform, you can get into some gates that you normally can't get into. Um, you know, the security was still a little, not lots of daisy, but you know, with heightened security now, it, it takes Fort Knox just to move on military bases. But back in that time, it was a little more um, um, relaxed atmosphere. And I literally went to the CEO of the ship at that time and said, hey, we got a crazy notion to put something on an aircraft carry and it was his ship, Captain Brown at the time. It was his ship. He said, I want to do it. We made it happen. And it didn't take a lot. It didn't take a lot of um, resources. Um, you know, we Echelon, I think, had a portable outdoor racquetball court at the time with three wall ball. And I Echelon what we wanted to do. And Echelon said, go for it. So we built the court in like two days on the aircraft. Okay. Two or three days. And had, I don't know. Um, 1,800 some service members had a chance to actually play on the court. And we did it, I think, like I said, over two or three days. So the first day we had the pro males. Jeez, I, I, I don't even remember who showed up, you know, from the RRT. I know Rhonda um females um uh, geez i think jackie uh it was rocky um alvaro jason and chris definitely staying I, th I think you were there no i wasn't there i wasn't there but uh... you had i remember you had something going on at the time so i just don't remember but it was mostly the exit long team for the most part who came out and showed up and played on that event but Look, I'll be honest with you. That was, shoot, man, over 10 years ago. I don't want to stay on the aircraft carrier because you didn't ask me my dream. You asked these guys theirs. If pie was in the sky, Sutsy, my dream would be I want to put an outdoor racquetball court on the Washington National Mall. Hold that thought right there. We're going we're gonna to let Ken and Ernest go. And, uh, you know, Ken, Ernest, thank you so much for, again, for your service. Sorry that all we have to offer right now is words, but there'll be a lot more to offer, I promise. And, um, you know, we appreciate your service. And Ellie, with that, we're going we're gonna to let Ken and Ernest go. Is there anything else you want to close with there? No, you know, I think it's great. I think, I think I'd, you know, I'm hoping you guys have time. Uh, maybe Ernest doesn't, but Ken, hopefully you can uh, listen to listen to uh, the rest of this interview here because uh, you know, it's, it's, we're going to ask a lot of interesting and fun questions. And, and um, I think it'll be really informative for racquetball people. Um, and so uh, hopefully you can, you can uh, be a part of it still. But, thank, uh, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us. Really. Thank thanks. You. Thanks for coming out. We're going to stay with Steven here. Thanks Ken. Thanks. Honest to see you guys. I'll be in touch with you. So Stephen, you were getting, you know, back to, you know, you're talking about your dreams here going forward for, for uh, everything that you've been involved in with military racquetball. So, you know, nothing happens in the military without logistics. And that's what I did. I was a supply officer while I was uh, in the Navy 20 some years. And I'm not the guy, I, I'm the guy that says, I hear what you're saying, but I don't have to accept what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but I don't have to accept it. And I just don't accept when people tell me stuff like, oh, we got this court here and we got this court there, but what is but for? But is an excuse, but is, yeah, we want to support, but right now we just, you know, okay, fine. Then I'm gonna stop asking you and I'm gonna tell somebody else what we're gonna do. And when we do it, then you're gonna come back around and then we'll have a better conversation. So my conversation is, I mean, so I appreciate the setup, you know, on the aircraft carrier, but since then we set up this racquetball court 
like I said, on the beach in Virginia Beach, we set up two racquetball courts in Washington, D.C., downtown. But this time, I, and the reason why I want to go that high to putting it on the National Mall, I don't know how, I don't know when, whatever, but that's my dream, is because every year before COVID came about, you had 800 to 1 million viewers during the summertime in Washington, D.C., international. Man, wouldn't that be crazy if some person from Ireland or China or wherever, and we had all these folks in June at the National Mall watching three racquetball courts being played by the top players. Yeah. You want to talk about exposure, that's your exposure. And you make it free to them. Um, you know, and, and no offense, and I don't know, you guys know this stuff better than I do, but you know, racquetball getting on prime time, ABC or ESPN, the ball just moves too fast. I think I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not in that arena, but I do know when you hit the ball at 120 miles an hour, you know, three inches off the ground, that's that's kind of hard viewing. You know, whether it's the blue ball, the purple, red, whatever. But you're in close. Let's bring the audience and put them right on a racquetball court. That's what I want. Th those are the kind of things that I want to do. Set it up. Everybody's talked about setting up the portable court in a mall. Nobody's in the mall anymore, you know? So I don't know what that dream looks like, but I want to go somewhere where you guys get to come out and these warriors and veterans get to come out and, and they get to see a person play from a wheelchair. I and mean, that's how you get the exposure. That's how we're going to grow the sport because I'm not in the, you know, junior league and Ellie, I know you are, that's, that's your baby. Um, but that's one incubator to keep the sport alive. But we got a lot of other folks, man, that definitely want to play. But every time I talk to somebody, I always hear the same excuse of, well, I used to play, but, you right. know, the but is, all the time. We hear yeah, that all the time. Yeah. The but is nobody taught you how to play in a, in a different way. You know, it doesn't have to be just using the, the, the red ball or the green ball to play. Why not use a foam ball to slow the ball down, use a different paddle? You know, that's what I teach. And I get a lot of people hooked that way because racquetball is about confidence building. You know, Sutsi, I mean, you know, you guys are ironclad in what you, you know, how you play. You don't back down from anybody. Now you're not supposed to, you know, but a person who's just learning how to play, they're not ready to see a Z serve. They don't even know what that is, you know? Yeah. So we got to slow it down to where they can learn and build their confidence. Once we get them that, then you get them hooked. That's how I keep my students uh, engaged. So my dream is to expose the sport in a different area. That's how we're going to get the growth. Is, is indoor racquetball or outdoor racquetball better for uh, what you're looking to do within, um, you know, the sport of racquetball in the military? Right now, Again, you know, you guys are family, so I can just say what I need to say. When I go to a military base, it's ironclad. You, you got to get the permission. You got to get permission from MWR. MWR is the, the gymnasium. It's called uh, Morale, Welfare, and Recreation. They control the gymnasium, the commissaries, and all that stuff on base. So for me to set up a clinic on base, I got to get so many permissions. And that stuff takes time, you know, just to get in touch with the right person can take three months just to have a conversation and tell them we want to teach a free <clears throat> clinic. But I can go to a park in New York or you know, I love to play down here in North Carolina. I got a special place and my Carolina folks know uh, a free park in Southern Pines. That's it's a three wall outdoor court. So for right now, for this pandemic, I definitely think outdoor is the introduction to the sport. Hell, I even say back it up. You don't even need an, a court. I go and play on one wall. Right. Because the biggest thing is, if you don't have a good foundation on how to hit a forehand or a good foundation on how to hit a backhand, it doesn't matter where you are. Indoor, outdoor, if, if you don't have the foundation, no matter what you hit, it's going to be wrong. So I like to teach outdoor on a tennis court. You know, if you, if you go to, you know, you see these tennis courts, they have the practice wall. That's where you start your players at. Because if I can teach you how to hit a, a true forehand and hit the same spot 20 times, now hit it on the backhand with the right form, it doesn't matter where we go. 
you know. So right now, I, I would say outdoor is the best way. Stephen, let me let, let let me ask you. You know, we had Ernest and Ken on, and there was a moment there where Ernest clearly got yeah super emotional. What do you think it was? Like, what do you think it was that that got him to that point? Any any idea? Yeah, I mean, bottom line, man, he loves the sport, and he you you what you saw was a warrior fighter. He wants to be better, and you know, like you said, his body is you know, is, I don't know, I, you know, I'm not a doctor, but it's breaking down, but his mind is still strong, just like Doug in Omaha with no legs and with one arm. What the hell? I mean, you know, you, <laughs> I get, I, I wake up with a, you know, sore back or something. Imagine what Doug has to go. He can't find his legs. That's why they get emotional. And then when they see the ability to just to be able to hit a ball, man, it, it, it gives them hope. That's all they want. Because when they were in the military, they felt part of a team. They felt part of a family. You know, whether it's a unit that's deployed, um, a brigade, a unit like mine, you know, hell, in a submarine, you are a special elite, whatever you're doing on the aircraft carrier. But again, what with, with, with the audience has got to understand, these guys and girls who get out of the military, it, it's like a football player. I, I it's, like it's like your star football player. Sorry, I'm gonna just use this. You know, everybody can relate, and I don't. I, I don't want to be so. And if I'm out of context, then forgive me. Send me an email later. But it's just like, um, who's that? Uh, Dak, with the, the quarterback. Dak Prescott. Tore his ACL. Done. And the uh, uh, um, who's that? Burrow uh, for the Cincinnati. Joe Burrow. Right. Yeah, Joe Burrow. Pro stars. How do you think they feel? You know, forget the contract and the money. They're superstars. Mm -hmm. And when you take that t-shirt or that jersey off you forget them that's how these veterans feel because when they're in the military they're freaking superstars they give orders and they receive orders and they execute because do you, do you think they, they feel trust. do you think and you too do you think they feel appreciated and and you as well honestly you know like like you know you, you can't put into words all right you know, Can we, look, I'm gonna put the pen down. I'm gonna stop being all political. I'm gonna just say this correctly. Say it. Don't give me lip service. I, I'm not gonna do it. Don't give me lip service. Say it. I want you to back up what the fuck you are saying. Excuse my language. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it's 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 past ten o'clock East Coast. Yeah, there you go. There you we're go. Off. But I'm tired of people saying, oh, we love the military. Really? Right, right. Do me two things. If you love the military that much and you want to help veterans and wounded warriors in one, write a check and then show up for a clinic. Is Period. that it? Is, is that it? Is that so like if you're speaking directly to the racquetball yep. professionals? I'm speaking to that person who says that. And if that doesn't resonate with you, then OK, we can have that conversation later. But I keep, I, you know, everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to be the Rocky, the Kane, the Ronda, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Then you put the 20 hours in a day and do that. But that's not life. That's not reality. The reality is people around in your neighborhood need your help. You got a veteran that's probably three doors down from you or somebody's family members three doors down from you is suffering, not physically, but mentally to some degree. And you know how to play racquetball. My guys, my girls around the country, they're looking for something. So if you want to say I love the military and my dad and my cousin was in the military, then fine. Then when I come to your town, show up and give us a hand. And when I leave, make sure the plate still is spinning. What I mean by that is, you know, the circus clown that spin these plates and they weeble and wobble a little bit and they fall down because we don't have folks to back up what they say. Oh, I want to help, but then, you know, something comes up, okay? And you might not have time. Okay, I get that. But I'll be blunt with you guys. I'll be as blunt as I can. I do this because I love to help people. It's my calling. It's my, it's, it's my ministry. Seriously, it, it is my ministry. I've, I've lost friends maybe over this. I've lost 
stuff over this. I'm not going to get too personal, but if you don't understand what I mean, then you don't play the sport of racquetball. But I have lost a lot of stuff because I'm chasing something because that's what I'm supposed to do. It's not everybody's dream. This is mine, and I claim it. Good, bad, and different. But everybody can't teach. But you know what? You go out to eat, and you spend $80, and you spend $20. That $20 and I'm just being as blunt as I can. It takes us to teach those guys. It takes us about $128 to teach one veteran for four weeks. I'm sorry, for six weeks. Let me say that again. It takes us about $128 to teach one veteran an eight week course, a six week course. We give them a racket. How much does a racket cost? We go to Walmart, cost 40 bucks. I can get rackets at whatever. I'm not, I'm not you know. I got to pay the instructor something because I believe bluntly, if you run a nonprofit, people's time is valuable. I believe in that. John and, and Ellie and, and such, you know, yeah, you guys, your time is valuable. It needs to be compensated. We have that conversation. What that looks like, okay, we sit down. We give them a manual. You can't just go into LA Fitness anymore for free. So we pay for that membership. And some other little, so yes, that number, about $128 for six weeks will rehab one of those guys that you saw. I want to teach 650 this year. I want 650 more of them on this next call. How do I do that? Is this one of me? And it, well, I got, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got, so we're made up of four other folks, Hank Marcus, Terry Rogers, Peggy Inchez, um, um, Steve Lerner, who's our marketing guy, you know, that's our core team. We meet every week. And Jack Hughes, we meet every week. None of us get paid to do this. None of us get paid to do this. But you see these guys, 7,800, whatever that number is, for the last 12 years who we've helped. I'm not here begging for nobody. I'm just being, so that's, you look, I, you know, hey, we're straight shooters and I'm just shooting straight right now. And if it backfires on me, I'm okay with that because I know what my passion is. I know what, I know what we have to do. It's not going to backfire. No, oh, I mean, but you know, what I'm saying is I've seen these other nonprofits and they, well, you don't know where the money is. Well, fine. You come have a conversation. I better yet, you get on the plane with me and you come to one of these clinics. I got to go to four, three clinics before Christmas. Three. Who funds that? Kids. Who funds that? No one, well, the VA funds my travel. Okay. The travel. So they, so they get you there and then it's up to you to do the work. There you go. So I got to go to Kansas City. I got to go to St. Louis. I'm going to Tampa and I'm going to Charleston, South Carolina to go when to. Are you, when are you going to St. Louis, by the way? Just uh, uh, December, December 8th and 9th, Monday and Tuesday. I'll be there. I'm going to be, wait, wait, this true story. Hold on. This is news. <laughs> uh, no, I'm serious. I have a partner, friend, client that I'm working with. I'm going to be in St. Louis, December 8th through the 14th. So you're going to text me. We're going to talk tomorrow after this and we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. S yeah. Steven, you know, on that note, you know, is there a partnership with USA Racquetball? And if so, you know, it might be prior to COVID times, maybe, you know, maybe that's changed during COVID times, but if so, you know, how's that going? And what are they doing to, to help, to truly help? Um, we have a partnership with them. We appreciate them getting us out there, but we need instructors, man. Bottom line, we, we, need, we need instructors in places such so like in Cincinnati, in Denver, you know, in Portland, or well, not Portland, but, you know, around the country in these major cities. So when we show up, the reason why I say that is because every major city has a VA medical center. Okay, we got 1800 VA medical centers in the country, whatever that number looks like. And each VA medical center has sheets, the service they provide outpatients. I don't know, 3000 patients that they see. That's a freaking big number. So my whole point is when we go to these VAs, I need to have folks who I can call up and say, I need your help. And again, I don't want you to be a certified A or master 
you know, open player. No, I'm looking for a B player. An A player would definitely work. But if you know what a forehand, if you don't know, I can teach you that on the spot. But that's what USA is helping us with. But I can't wait for all this political stuff to go through. I mean, they are definitely helping us out. But when what, I call, what, what do you mean by that? What political stuff? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I'm not in that arena of what USRA, you know, what, 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 what they are going through. I, I think they're going through transition. If not, you know, the leadership, management and all that, which is great. You know, and, and we, ha- we I love the USRA, um, but I'm the dog in the fight. So I know, I know, I know. Part of part of this connection is is uh, there's a no charge membership for military personnel with USAR. You, you have any idea what the numbers are on that for uh, military personnel who actually uh, have taken advantage of that and and you know are connected to USA Racquetball in some sense? I, I don't. Man, good question. You you, you got me. You got me. Um, Sorry about that. No, no, no that's fine. I, I mean, I, I honestly don't. And, and the reason why I say that is because not only talking about USRA, but we also talk about NMRA. You know, that's where you find a lot of your veteran folks who, when I say veteran, let me, let me clarify that. Veteran is a person who served a contract and got out on honorable service or got out, you know, because they're served. Now, a retiree like me has done 20 years. So you have folks who've served eight years. That's a veteran. Folks like me who served for 20 years, I'm a re- active, I'm sorry, every retired veteran. I've served 20 years as a retiree, you know, get benefits, disability, et cetera, et cetera. But if you have served, and I'm talking to the audience, if you serve, that's what we want to have a conversation with. Whether you can help us teach a class, be part of one of our classes, or go find a veteran or a wounded warrior to, you know, to come on and Let's go hit some balls. But um, we do have a strong relationship with the USRA. Um, it can be stronger, obviously. You know, of course, everybody can do more. Um, but, you know, Ellie, you know me, man. I, I, I'm, I'm not the guy to keep sitting around and waiting and waiting for no. this person. Wait, I don't have time for that. The reason why is because I go back to, you. See, when you look at Ernest, that's what I got to deal with. 22 veterans a day are committing suicide. We don't have time to wait. What are we waiting for? Right. So, Ellie, so- Ellie, before, before, before we wrap it up, I know, I know you have, you know, Stephen, we can go on and on and on. I know, man. I know. We, I, I, and, 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 and we're with you, by the way, but we do have to wrap it up at some point. So Ellie, I'm going to let you ask the final question and then uh, I'll close it out. Sure. You know, I know, I know one of the things uh, that we've mentioned here is max, you know, military adaptive court sports. So talk a little bit about the transition from MRF to, to uh, military adaptive court sports or, or really what's happening there and, and why that's such an important uh, topic. Uh, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to piss off the audience just a little bit. Sorry for the language, but, and the reason why I say that is because what we at Max has have done, and we changed our name to Max, which stands for Military Adaptive Court Sports. Because look, everybody can't eat spaghetti. When you come to my table, you might not want to eat spaghetti. And what I mean by that is, if I got a person 68 years old, look, honestly, they can't go get that forehand the way they used to, because their body is just, you know. So what we have done, we changed the name because not only are we teaching racquetball, but now we're teaching pickleball. I know you guys don't like it and hate it. I get it. I, look, I don't like, like <laughs> I don't like pickleball, <laughs> period. But the VA says that I have to teach it. So guess what? I'll find, I'll fall in love with it. But this here, this is my office. <laughs> There's no other like it. Okay. Her name is Betsy. Do not mess with Betsy. <laughs> so we do pickleball, racquetball, badminton. And now, so I'm bringing you guys in, I'm doing a new thing called padel. Yep. Padel is the freakiest sport I've ever seen. <laughs> Boy, if you haven't seen it, you got to try it. We have it down here in South America. I'm coming there. 
<laughs> Matter of fact, I'm playing in the tournament next week in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, look, I get it. And I'm not a sellout. What I am is I'm promoting racket sports yep. to different venues. They might not like racquetball to initially. They might like badminton. And if you haven't tried badminton, don't sleep on that. That is a hard game to play. Awesome sport. Awesome sport. You will burn calories. But if you can play pickleball, badminton, then I get we'll get you on the racquetball court because you know, you is there's so many things in racquetball that you just can't do in pickleball, period. You know, so that was the reason why, you know, for a business standpoint, that we had to broaden out, broaden our scope a little bit and try to attract more people. I'm never going look, this this is this is who I am. MRF. And, you know, but I understand that if we don't open up the gate a little bit, we might lose the foundation that we have. I, I you know, Stephen, I agree with that a lot. And I'm, I'm that, you know, it's good to hear about the change and why and, and, and understanding a little bit better, because I'm someone who believes in that, that the court, that even the racquetball court itself can be adaptive to other court sports, to other sports in general that might not even be a racket sport. But the reality is, as racquetball players and people, we need our courts. We need them to stay where they are. We need new ones to be built. Um, right. And that's happening in Latin America and Central and South America more than it is in the United States in terms of new ones being built. But there's opportunity as, as long as that those courts are in use. They can't sit empty all day and have the business owner expect to just have it be that way. That's space right there. And that's time and money. So, yep. you know, I'm, I'm with you on that. And, and that's an important concept. And personally, I'm, I'm a pickleball player as well. I, I love the sport, but I, nothing will compare to racquetball in terms of yeah. the way that the sport makes you feel the, the ability to bring power, to bring the, the chess match to, to this yeah. dungeon of a court, or if you're outdoors, it's even a different type of chess match, which Sudsy just really real, realizes now and experience for the first time, you know, playing outdoor racquetball out in Vegas and just having it be a different style than his indoor game. So, yeah. you know, those, these are all good things. I think racquetball could do a could could look into the idea of piggybacking to what pickleball is doing in some ways because I know pickleball players, if they're at a tournament, a big tournament, they have hundreds of people, sometimes thousands, and they have alternative viewing with a racquetball court or two there, whether it's indoor or outdoor they'll be amazed at what they see. They'll realize, yeah, this isn't pickleball. This is a, this is a faster game. This is a different game with this has explosion and power and so much it's more. Better. It's quite a bit better, but you know, pickleball has something going on right there. So, and, and I just wanted to share those concepts because that's why military adaptive court sports is, is really a good name change. And I, I fully support that and agree with that hundred percent, you know, Stephen, my daughter did some research on you today. I have a 12 year old daughter who's into loves racquetball, plays, plays a bunch. And I asked her to join me in helping research you a little bit. And she's, and she, she, she noticed that uh, she said, dad, I think he's met president Obama and had a chance to talk to him. So I'm wondering, you know, if that is the case and knowing you, you definitely brought up racquetball to him. And so, you know, how, if, if so, if that's real, you know, did you bring up racquetball and has he heard of it? Has he played it? You know, his, any thoughts there that you can share? I'm not political. I am not political. I'm not at all. So what happened, I'm not going to get into the long story, but yes, I did meet President Obama up in Washington, D.C. You know, he was a big, or he is a big basketball player. I met him at Fort McNair um, when we were hosting the tournament 2012. I saw him, I mean, Jesus, 15 Secret Service men in the gym. He was walking out, his entourage, medical team, media, and he was the last person out besides three of his secret services. And I actually kid you not, I've actually seen the football. There is a football and it is guarded by two personnel. And as he was walking out, I said, excuse me, Mr. President, I mean, how, what is that? <laughs> what the hell? And we had a good five minute conversation after he played basketball. So he has one of these shirts and I gave him a racket he probably won't use it, but yeah, I, I, I actually had a chance to meet him. I actually met Condoleezza Rice and even met the first lady, um, former first lady, uh, Michelle Obama. So yeah, MR, MRF has taken us to some crazy places, but we, we're not done yet. I, you know, again, I don't get wrapped around in superstars and all that. My thing is, Ellie, let's, let's get these guys on the court, man. And, you know, right. let's get them, let's get them whole again.
You, you, yeah, I mean, Stephen, we're gonna we're gonna let you go here, but you, your attitude, your approach, your energy is just spectacular. And um, you know, yeah, you know, one of the things I wrote down is that you're somebody that doesn't. It's it's not about the talk. You just do. You know, like you don't want to talk about it. You just want to get it done and do it. Yep. And uh, I kind of feel like you're calling out anybody and everybody that that says they want to help and i love that so you know we're gonna we're gonna try to help you to do that but i'm also going to challenge you to you know to challenge us and anybody in the sport that maybe could help and uh and we'll do what we can and and having you on tonight was was part of that and uh you know you know with that said i'm going to let you any final words because what we do is you get the last word, and then Ellie and I are going to stay on for a couple minutes, and then we're going to close it out. But, uh, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Really, you know, I, I tell you, words are, I don't know, words to me sometimes mean shit. You know, it's like, just do it, right? Like, yeah. show me show me action. Like, show me. You know, don't tell me. And uh, I just want to say thank you to you. You know, thank you for your service. Thank you for having, you know, the the two warriors on and thank you. And thank you for what you're doing for racquetball. And, and quite frankly, it's just, you're not seen enough. So uh, I'm going to let you have the last word and then I'm going to say goodnight and Ellie's going to say goodnight and we, we could have you on again. You know, this has been awesome. So, uh, so here you go. Make sure we hook up in St. Louis. I'm going to be there. Look, so we got to do one thing. We got to go find some barbecue. I'm big on barbecue in different cities. You know, I'll be I love it. I'm I'm from New York, but I love barbecue. I know. So. I know. So so let's make sure we talk because I'll be in Kansas City. I'll be free from uh, Saturday until Tuesday. So I'll be you know we can whatever that means. Let's make it happen. But you know I I always forget this, and I got to make sure I always remember to say this. You know you know I'm a man of faith. Um, you know I got a calling. I don't take my calling my ministry, whatever you want to, I don't take it lightly because I know people watch. They watch those who move, good or bad, because they want to see what your character is made of. You know, mine is, you know, my, I live by, you know, always keep God first. You know, I don't know. Look, when we started this, Ellie, when you and I hooked up at that meeting room in, in, in uh, with Ectolon, you know, we, we shook hands and this, that, and that. Dude, I had no idea 10 years later we'd still be doing this. It wasn't my, it wasn't, it wasn't my thing, but we got it, you know? And it's like, okay, so now what are you going to do with it? We're going to keep doing one step at a time. If I can stay if I, out of all the starfish that I see on the beach, if I can throw one back and then three back and then five back, then I did my job. But every time I go somewhere, you guys have seen this picture, you know, with me in this flag, this is old glory. And I always get emotional when I show this to my, service members because they understand it. You guys understand it too, but this flag was actually, and it's, it's beat up, it's not folded right. And I know I'm gonna get a phone call. What the hell is it? Hey, this flag is in work, you know, and I'll probably be buried in this thing. So if you guys read my eulogy, you heard it from me first, but that's what I believe, man. You know, um, what's your calling? Why are you here? What are you doing with your life? Mine is I just I found this sport and I think I'm helping some folks and, and I'm good with that. But, you know, if, if I got one last word to the viewers and all this, like I said, I, I don't steer away from it, that we're nonprofit and I can't do this. I'm not I'm not looking for a well. It would be nice to get paid to do this, but that's not the reason why I do it. I do it because I'm the one who needs to help, you know point blank. You know, you guys don't know my whole story, but I, I deal with my own demons. Trust me. At night in the morning, I get bad days and I get good days, you know, and lately there have been a lot of better days than, than, than the latter. So MRF, now Max, always can use some help financially, whatever that means. You search your heart. And if it's true to you, then let's have a conversation. But I know, honestly, to reach 650 veterans this year through pandemic and all that other crap doesn't happen overnight. I can't just get on an airplane. Yeah, the VA sponsors some of that, but that's only half of it. 
You know, these guys need help. These girls need help. If you can give us your time, then I'm cool. And that's all we want. Simple. And Sutsy, I'm not the guy to shoot a lot of BS. I'm the guy that's going to say I'm going to get it done somewhere or not. So listen, reach out to me. Ellie, I think I got it right. Our email again is our website is militaryadaptivecourtsports.org. My email address is just that, S Harper, H A R P E R, at militaryadaptivecourtsports.org. And send me an email. At least let me know how I did. I mean, make sure my face is clean <laughs> and all that other good stuff. But guys, look, man, this ain't going to be our last time we talk. This is just a check-in because you guys are my family. I'm not just talking about you two clowns. I'm talking about the family of racquetball. You know, I'm, I miss being on the court. I really do. But it's it's my healing, you know, and I take it personal. So, hey, Suts, it was good seeing you in the airport, dude. I never thought that we'll be doing this again. So we got uh, about a week and a half. Let's talk. Let's coordinate some things. And let's, uh, let's get out there. Ellie, hey, dude, we're going to get you somewhere, somehow. We're going to get you on the aircraft carrier or... Wherever that is, trust me, I get, we, we got your contact. Yeah, you know, I look forward to being involved, you know, going forward. I don't know why it took so long to uh, and haven't been involved, you know, but uh, here in Northern California, haven't traveled much for racquetball, but I'll certainly we'll 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 be in communication about this. So uh, I think it fits right up what uh, what I'm all about as well here as an instructor of racquetball and and trying to help people. So uh, thank you. I appreciate you being on on this call tonight and uh, being a part of this. And yeah, we will have you uh, back on again in the future. All right, guys. Hey, family, it's good seeing you guys. I'll see you on the court sooner or later. Hey, Stephen, we'll talk soon. Ellie and I are going to close it out, but I'll make sure to remind everybody how to get a hold of you and how to you. actually, you know, do something about it and be part of it. So there you go. Thank you. All right, folks. You have a good night. Good night. Ellie, I mean, all right. So, you know, <laughs> after having Stephen and the two wounded warriors, you know, there's a word that kept popping up in my head. And the word was, is perspective. You know, I mean, he just puts everything in perspective. You know, talking to Ernest, who was getting emotional, who was getting us emotional, talking to Ken, you know, you and I hit a racquetball around, you know, as hard as we can, you know, for our life. But that really means shit, right? Like when you talk to a couple of guys like that, that are serving in the military and putting their life on the line or, or suffering from PTSD, which happens, you know, really for me, it touched home. And I, I don't know why Scotty Mack was texting me. He's like, you know why I can see you're emotional. You know, what about for you? You know, what, what was that conversation like for you? Yeah, certainly, you know, and, and that goes without saying, I think Suds, you know, it's uh this is why I thought we should have this call, type of call. And, and I, you know, it's, it's learning too. It's learning about what Steven has built with MRF, uh, what we've now come kind of accustomed to seeing MRF, uh, Military Racquetball Federation. They've got involvements in some big events and we noticed that, but how much attention are we paying to it? Maybe not enough, you know, and, and kind of meeting him that first time in Houston. And when we were at the Team Exelon meeting and seeing, seeing how, we, how we approached and discussed things with Scott Winters and Hank Marcus and really Hank you know, Hank doesn't get enough credit. Again, another area that, you know, we keep bringing his name up, but he's in, we'll have he's, been involved, he's been involved in a lot of different areas of racquetball over the last 25, 25 years, 30 years. And so, um, you know, it, for me, I'm constantly, like always, I'm constantly searching for the questions that are interesting for our viewers, for anybody who's watching this show or going to watch this show in the future. So, you know, I go there a lot, but certainly it's emotional. You know, we've had a chance, you and I, to spend time playing on the United States national racquetball team. And, the, you know, that's our that's our moment, our part. But you're right. You know, it's that's just racquetball. And we know that we've kept that in perspective, I think. And that's what's led us to a show like this and to having a guest like like Steven on the show. And and it's good. You know, I think it's good for Scotty Mack in the background to kind of get to know some of this stuff. I always kind of kid him a little like you're pretty new in the sports still, bud. Uh, and, you know, and he doesn't he doesn't necessarily always buy that. But, um, you know, this is good to introduce him to different aspects of racquetball that exist and they exist in other sports of course you know wounded warrior programs uh larger in other sports i mean it's god it's huge it's huge involvement in let's say football for example where they're recognizing uh, the wounded warrior program 
quite often, but um, you know, this is, this is about racquetball and uh, it was good to get this story out. And um, you know, I, I thought the call was uh, different for us, you know, different to prepare for this one, not sure where it was going to go and, and all that, but uh, I think it was another successful call and I'm glad we did it. And uh, you know, it'll, it'll be good to check back on that situation and whether it's a year or a couple of years and see uh, if you and I can stand up to, the challenge that's there and get involved as instructors in the future, you know, a little more difficult for you living in Ecuador, not as difficult for me. And I'm not sure why it's taken that long to even maybe get to that stage for me. So, you know, do I, I feel a tiny bit guilty. I, I won't lie. I really do. Um, but you know, I think there's, there's time still going forward. Hopefully, you know, if everything stays on course and, you know, there's a little bit of time for me to, to get involved here uh, better late than never. And, um, you know, I look forward to doing that and, and trying to hold myself accountable. Yeah, well, don't feel guilty, Ellie. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of viewers tonight that are watching and and I see a lot of comments, you know, from people that are commenting about how to help. And Stephen made it pretty clear. You know, yep. if you really if you really want to help, reach out to him. I know I do. I know Ellie does. I hope this show inspired and has motivated you to want to help and and be part of it you know, because we can always do more, we can always be better. And, um, you know, how do you thank guys like Steven or Ernest or Ken? You really can't, you know, and um, let's just try to do our part and do the best we can, you know, and, and with that, we're going to say goodnight. Uh, reach out to Steven, reach out to the Military Racquetball Federation or the MAX um, and, and see what you can do to get involved. You know, Ellie and I can do different things than maybe you can. Obviously, financial is a part of it. You know, one of the things that jumped out was 128 bucks to to rehab a a, a military wounded warrior. You know, for six weeks, I, mm -hmm. I can't even imagine that. You know, another thing that jumped out is 22 22 veterans a day are committing suicide, and I just have no words for that. So, with that, we will see you soon. Have a good night. Scotty Mack, thank you. Steven, Ernest, Ken, thank you. We'll see you next week. And we don't know who the guest is yet. No clue. That's the truth. truth. We truly, truly no don't clue. know. We truly we, don't know. We thought last week that, you know, it was going to be Steven this week because it was almost him last week. And, and we had a great show in Todd Boss. Um, and that was our, that was, you know, I don't want to say our second choice, but that was also on the table for us. But we didn't announce it with Steven this week, but Next week, we truly don't know. We haven't even talked about that at all. So we'll see what direction we go. It's always God, interesting for me. God's honest truth. I'll be coming to you from Florida. I will not be here in Ecuador. Unfortunately, this beautiful background, uh, I will be in South Florida. But Ellie and I and Scotty Mack have done that. We'll see all of you. Please share the feed. Get in touch with Steven. See what you can do to help Military Racquetball. You know, it's an organization that obviously is, is serving an amazing cause. And uh, we'll see you next week on episode 22, Sunday night. If you have any recommendations of who you want to see, let us know. Otherwise, Ellie and I, Scotty Mack, Veronica, Jen Ellis, Julius, we'll, be, we'll find the guest for you. Have a great night, and we'll see you soon.